All right, how's everyone doing this evening? Yes, buddy. That was a great service this morning, huh? God showed up, should he showed out too. I'm telling you. All right, uh, everybody bow your, bow your head. I'll listen to a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all you've given us, dear Lord. Thank you for this opportunity we have to come back into your house to worship you. And I pray you speak to our hearts tonight, dear Lord, and that you uh, you just bless this service and, and the message that we're going to receive. Open our hearts to hear from you. And um, I pray that we just, um, that your light shines through us to this lost and dying world, dear Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Get y'all turn to page 207 in the brown hymnal. We're going to be singing Sweet By and By. And y'all be thinking of a testimony you'd like to share. Everybody's got a testimony tonight, right? Amen. You better have. <laughs> we live by the word. Oh, right. She didn't like to see people raise their hands. And she said, it says in the Bible, you have to have pure hands. And I said, my hands are pure. Jesus' is blood covers. Hey, <laughs> there you go. Right here at this church, several years ago, several years ago, we had a pastor that didn't want us to say amen. Wow. Because I was used to saying amen, and he asked me one time after church, Miss Shirley, I wish you wouldn't do that because it, it messes me up. Y'all don't do that. Praise God for the freedom. 
I thank God we got a, got a pastor that will get us a message that will make us want to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. This morning was a shout. Yeah. Many a church that don't have that. I like a church that shows some life. Amen. They jumping up and down, running around, you know, got cymbals and tambourines, and you know the church is alive. Exactly. Yeah. At least we're not sitting, soaking, and souring. Yeah. Right? That's right. We started out this morning and came in. Of course, Brother Gary wanted to see if I was twitching or not, and I wasn't, thank goodness. But I just had to share with him some of the things that were laid on my heart, and that just kind of started us off this morning, and so I wanted to make sure everybody else got to hear it. You know, because you don't just want to want to say something just a little bit. But last night I was sitting down, and, and every year I write a Christmas letter to all my family. And it's usually a one-pager, and, you know, this is what Debbie did this year, this is what Martin did this year, da-da-da-da-da. Well, I always started off with a scripture. And I read my verse from, like, two years ago, and it was uh, talking about introducing the Christmas season and all that. And I was like, yeah, that's a really good thing, but that's not where I'm at right now. I mean, I'm in the Christmas spirit, don't get me wrong, but that wasn't where I was at. And so I thought for a little bit, and, and God brought to mind, he said, go back to your verses from this year. You should not try to post a verse every day to Facebook. And this was the very first one that I posted in January 20, 2020. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were looking forward to a fabulous year. Y'all know what happened in my year. But God prepared me. He started preparing me long ago for where I am walking right now. And sure enough, a few weeks ago, he brought up another one that reminds me that no matter where we are, how deep our waters are, how, how fast the rivers are, no matter what, how hot the fire is, he's right there with us, with no matter what. And my sister sent me something the other day, so I had to print it out, and I'm going to read it to y'all. I, I briefly told Gary about it this morning, but it just touched my heart because it's that reminder that, you know, when we go through bad times, we get caught up in our bad times, and we forget that other people have bad times. Other people have rough things. What are their seasons like? How are they dealing with their seasons? Do they have God in their life to deal with those seasons? So my niece wrote this about a couple in their church in Michigan. So I'm just going to read through it. Um, and I pray that God blesses you with it as he did me. As we celebrate Advent this year, we, were, we are looking within our church family to celebrate the ways that God has against all odds, stepped into our lives and revealed himself in various ways. How God has showed, out, showed up and showed out. Last week we celebrated joy and we talked about the fact that not every story will end in the way that we want it to, but that does not negate the fact that in spite of our personal desires, God does in fact still step in. As a mother myself, I struggled to put words to paper this week. There were so many emotions that we as parents wade through when we're facing challenges that involve our children. Yet as I dug deeper into the story, I, I couldn't deny that it was saturated with love and that we see love in so, so many ways. So today I invite you to meet a precious part of our church family. Her name is Olivia. It was still 2019 when Tony and Gary Grange got the news. They would soon be adding another child to their family. With two older brothers and one sister, this little girl was the perfect addition to their family. The timing, Tony had, Tony had feeling a little bit apprehensive because they'd recently made the decision for Gary to join the Border Patrol. And he was set soon to leave so that Tony would be looking at these long months of raising her children alone and being pregnant with their fourth one. But then, came a diagnosis that they could never have imagined. Trisomy 13. It's a rare chromosome disorder characterized by having three copies of chromosome 13 in cells in the body rather than the usual two. In Olivia's case, Tony and Gary would soon learn that their daughter had an extensive list of abnormalities in her tiny body. The doctors reviewed her case and they used four words with Olivia's parents that they would never forget. Not 
compatible with life. Mm -hmm. Not compatible with life? These words rocked Tony and Gary to the core. Their daughter would not, could not, live outside of the safety of her mother's wombs. womb. Even as they began to absorb the pain of this fatal diagnosis for Olivia, the doctor went on to suggest, maybe you should terminate her. They said no. They would be asked to consider termination two more times throughout the pregnancy, but their answer remained the same. Olivia had a right to live, and they would fight for every precious moment of her life that was to be offered to them. Amen. Christmas 2019 came and went, and it had a mixture of pain and joy. How would Tony be able to face the fact of this coming birth and the death of the child without Gary by her side? But then came a blessing in disguise. As the airwaves became filled with the news of a pandemic, Gary got word that, uh, that due to COVID-19, his training was going to be delayed. The, what the enemy meant for evil, God was using for good. And I've seen that so many times, y'all. So many times this year. With the burden of Gary's departure now off the table, they settled in to cherish precious moments with their daughter and they strengthened their souls for what lay ahead. How does one prepare for a birth and a death? One would think that the human mind is incapable of comprehending all these complexities of the one followed so closely by the next. Over the coming weeks, God took Tori to a greater understanding of what love truly looks like. To love with no guarantees. To love in the spirit of the outcome. To love through all of the unknowns. God had entrusted this little life to Tony and Gary, and they rose to the challenge. They fully, heartfeltly said yes to God. Yes, they would love Olivia just as she was. Yes, Tony would nurture her and give her life for as long as she could. And yes, they would live a life of surrender. They would trust God's plan for their daughter no matter what. It causes one to wonder, what did Mary think? Mary, the mother of Jesus, did she too wrestle with the knowledge that her baby was born to die? Did she too wrestle with the unknowns as well as the unwanted reality of what laid ahead? Did she, like Tony, whisper a million I love yous to the child growing inside of her, knowing full well that there was a fatal diagnosis that would call her son to lay down his life for mankind. Her life reveals that yes, she did. She chose to love anyway, and in doing so, welcomed the pain that comes with sacrifice. They say it is to better, better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And this statement rang very true on March 20th of 2020. Now the world is in full pandemic mode, and Tony had carried Olivia to 38 weeks and she was being admitted to the hospital for induction. <coughs> Scared of what was to come, they begged for the opportunity to go home, and they let her as long as she promised to rest. She couldn't stay pregnant forever, after all. Despite the, Olivia's diagnosis, Tony had bonded with her baby girl. She had witnessed the wonder of Olivia's movements, her tiny feet shoving up against her ribs, the happy kicks after four o'clock waffles, 4 a.m. waffles, the miracle of watching her suck her little toes during the sonograms. But now Tony and Gary were here in a strange place where joy and grief collide. In a delivery room that was peaceful and quiet, a worshipable calm filled the air to those who were present and they witnessed Olivia's interest into the world. They wondered at the beauty of her blonde hair, the perfect little hands, and the way she clenched her tiny little fists. Love permeated that room. I felt that love this morning. Together they sang happy birthday over and over as to Olivia as she lay in her mother's arms. Tony closed her eyes, absorbing the feelings of Olivia's soft breaths breath on her chest as the overwhelming presence of God's peace filled the room. For 20 beautiful minutes, 
Olivia lay peacefully in her mother's arms until just as quietly she slipped away. Death is not horrific, Tony shared. It was more beautiful than I could ever have imagined. We laughed, we prayed, we sang, we longed for heaven as we watched her peacefully leave this earth and enter the presence of God. I'm almost jealous of her, Tony went on to say. Her journey through life was so beautiful. She only knew love. Her life was perfect. She was welcomed and loved by her earthly parents and then just as quickly opened her eyes to see her heavenly father. Oh, what joy that will be when we get to see her again. It was an honor to be, to be hers. We stand here nearly a year since she came and left, and anyone who talks to Gary or Tony will hear the testimony of how against all odds, God stepped in. He was there. While grief and chaos and confusion knocked at the door, God pushed his way through the darkness. He pushed his way through the darkness to reveal himself to this family over and over and over again in spite of this overwhelming loss. Stepping in doesn't require to do, for God to do things our way. No. Stepping in simply means entering into our situation. And in his kindness, he reveals himself to us in various ways. It's up to us to see his handiwork. Tony saw God step in and when the dark cloud of grief overwhelmed her, he stepped in in the silence of an empty nursery to bring comfort to a broken mother bearing the ache of empty arms. He stepped in through Gary's job in miraculous ways throughout Tony's pregnancy and in the weeks to follow. He stepped in through love and compassion of many of us sitting here today. She goes on to say how those, talk, those calls and texts and that, all that love support to the family. There, are not, there aren't many guarantees in life. Few of us in this room have had the privilege of meeting little Olivia on this earth, but that does not mean that she isn't a part of who we are. Her life changed everyone in that, in that little church. Do we grieve her passing? Absolutely, yes. But not as those who have no hope. Though our selfish desire would be to pass her around and celebrate her life here today, we've been offered a gift of knowing and loving her. Two things that cannot be dictated by the hands of a clock. Olivia's life was full of purpose and meaning. Not compatible? I disagree. You see, love takes sacrifice. It's proven over and over. We see it in every relationship. Our relationships with our spouse, with our kids, with our parents, <coughs> our siblings, our friends, and even with God. And when we stop and think about it, we realize that there's a loving, a loving with an agenda isn't really love at all. In the culture where 62 million lives have been thrown away based on personal preference of, one, of another, God stepped in and took Gary and Tony's lives and reminded them of the invaluable gift of choosing to give themselves over to love. Even when it hurts, they cho chose to surrender. They chose to sacrifice. They chose love, all so that Olivia might live. And in the end, they, and now all of us, bore witness to the miracle of her life. Today, we celebrate the love that God has for humanity. We celebrate the fact that through it, that though it caused him deep pain, God chose love so that we might have life. It's the power that fuels the Christmas story. Against all odds, God stepped into our fatal diagnosis. And he laid it all on the line so that we could experience eternal life. Amen. 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 You know, and I told our Sunday school class this morning, Martin's last words will forever ring in my memory because he told me I'm dying. And for the longest, I felt like there was fear in his voice. When I read this story this week, that is no longer what I heard. I heard I'm dying almost with an excitement. He knew what was on the other side. He knew what he was waiting for. He knew who was waiting for him. Little Olivia 
met Jesus like that? Are we hanging on to the desire to stay in this world when this world, this creation that God made is crying out, waiting for his return? Are we hanging on and saying, no, we got to be here just a little longer? Or are we crying out and saying, God, we are ready for you. We would love to see a few more people saved, but we are ready for you. No matter what. Amen. 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 They shall see that child one day. That's right. Amen. Absolutely. Lord. That's powerful. That's strong. Brother James, I saw you stand up. Do you have something? Jim pretty well covered. <laughs> Well, Ben, he's not going to. I will. I say praise the Lord tonight because of the fact that he showed up, he showed out, and he is awesome. Yeah, oh, talk about the blood flow that he just gave us back. It was like we stuck our arm out and he gave us a, an IV full of juice this morning. It was just awesome. And uh, I just thank him for that today. Just thank him for that when he does that for us. He fills our cup up to overflowing and just makes it bubble over sometimes. And sometimes all it takes is excitement from one person. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing at what he does with it. Because one cup will overflow to the next one and overflow to the next one and overflow to the next one. Like it did this morning with Debbie, then to Gary, then Kenneth, then us, and mm -hmm. Sunday school, and then it's like the whole church is blown up. It's like, wow, he's here. <laughs> so I was just so excited. I'm just so thankful that he is showing up and showing out right now. Mm -hmm. We need it. We need him. And I just thank you for that. Hallelujah. Well, this morning uh, I had a uh, song I always like to sing with the... Uh, um, Lord's Supper we partake, and that is there is a fountain. Uh, we didn't get to sing it this morning, so we have a few Christmas songs in there. So uh, we'll get y'all turn to page 132, and we'll sing the uh, first, second, and third verse of There is a Fountain.
<laughs> Somebody was in big church this morning. Amen. Amen. He was. I'm glad to be there. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone? Well, I'm not a speaker, and y'all know I'm not, but I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> you know. If somebody didn't didn't feel the Holy Spirit this morning, this beautiful service that God sent down for us all to hear is the songs were beautiful. He sent the song for Carrie to sing, and then the service afterwards. The Holy Spirit was moving, and oh God, He just rushed all over me. I just felt the power that I can't believe anybody didn't hear, didn't feel. Because if you didn't know the Lord this morning, we'll sure beat you over the head if you didn't. So anyway, I praise the Lord, and it was just beautiful, and I loved it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to think that we need to pray for our nation. Yeah. We had one of the nicest deals that came up during the election that I ever seen in my life. That's, that's outrageous. We're better people than that. Mm -hmm. We need to trust in God to do what's right. Yeah. The truth arises. I have to stand up and say, Debbie, all that this morning started with you. <laughs> and no, that it started point, with God. <laughs> and well, yes. And that he come in and, and he showed up and showed out, just like you said he did this morning. Because it was it all started right there. And I've been thinking about that all day. Every time I see Boy, God just really showed up this morning. Mm -hmm. He has, He has really been here today. Mm -hmm. And Mike, you just missed it. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you missed out because He was here today. So that's what I wanted to say. Well, I would like to say He's here every Sunday that he I've is. been here. I know it was yeah. great this morning. I understand what y'all are saying, and I agree with you. But I love, Don says, oh, wow, what is today? Saturday? Tomorrow we go to church. I mean, he's always so excited, and so am I. Sometimes we can't make it, but the, we love to come to church. And that's because of all of y'all, and especially Brother Gary. You're listening to the Lord. I, you always say, give God the glory, and I do. But I give God the praise for you because you're not ashamed to stand up there and say what it says. And there's a lot of soft-spoken preachers today that are not going to make it throughout the eternity, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but just be yourself. But I can't. <laughs> You said I missed it today, and I did. I missed it here. Right. But I preached at Hub Finds today. Hallelujah. And I preached a sermon on who I am in Christ. Amen. And let me tell you, God showed up. There you go. And, and it was an awesome service. Uh, I was there, but God took over, and it was phenomenal. Do you know who you are in Christ? Um, if you don't, go to... Ephesians chapter 1 and read the first 14 verses because God is telling you who you are. You are called from the foundation of the earth. You are a child of God. You are saved and sanctified. You are a you have an inheritance. You are you are you are in Christ. You have been given all of the spiritual gifts from heavenly places. The people were rejoicing this morning. Yeah. And I was just privileged to be a part of that. So I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I just missed what happened here. Right. <laughs> just missed what happened here. Hey, yeah. They tried to give you a hard time. Yeah, I did. <laughs> this is the one thing I've, I've learned over the last few years, um, especially teaching Sunday school and stuff like that. When I walk in these doors and I start to talk to people, I never know what's coming out of my mouth <laughs> because I don't know what God's got to say. And when he starts speaking, you just got to shut your own mind off and let him spill out. You know, and that's what Gary was saying this morning. We need to be eating of Jesus and drinking of Jesus to the point that it just pours out of us. 
And, you know, I know last week Melissa gave me a hug after Sunday school. She said, that was just such a good Sunday, a, a, a good lesson. And I was like, that's not what I thought I was going to be. <laughs> and it never is. You know, I can study for something and think this is what I'm going to do. And I know it's the same for Brother Gary. I think this is what we're going to talk about. But because we pray and we say, God, use us, he does. He opens he opens our mouth and he comes out and that's the way it should be we should be willing to say what God wants us to say in whatever moment it is so it, it doesn't start with me it doesn't start with Jer Jeremiah it doesn't start with John it starts with Jesus Amen. Amen. Yes, it, does. Amen. it starts with Jesus and then the question becomes are we full of him and are we willing to let him spill out of us so that we can feel the next person's cup right. and then the next person's cup and then the next person's cup. Amen. Hallelujah. Some good stuff. Yeah. You know what I find exceptional about this this morning in particular is I always get a little, I always feel a little apprehensive on the, I don't know the right word, but when we do the Lord's Supper because you examine yourself. <clears throat> And I examined pretty poor. But it's nice to know that that Jesus makes it makes you worthy. There's no there's just no other way. Right. Uh, when you got a head start and they tell you a week away, hey next Sunday we're gonna have a Lord's Supper, I start worrying right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we're just we're just nasty humans. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the more you examine the, the the dirtier you feel and the unworthy you feel and it's 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 Jesus, it makes you even stand up. Right. Right here. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's some good stuff. None of us is worthy, but He's faithful. That's right. Amen. Amen. He has the grace that keeps on giving. Amen. Well, if nobody else is going to say it, I'm thankful that God showed up, showed out. And brought somebody back to church. Amen. 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 Well, she's been mean to me all morning. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, Miss Patsy. Thank you. I was kind of shocked about Miss Patsy this morning. Went up to her and she wants a hug. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. I thought I was, felt special. She's a two-timer. You got to like her. Look at everybody. And if you notice, she ain't got the mask on now. I get you, thanks. You've already been through it. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good stuff. All right, y'all. Well, no one else? Got one more song. Last opportunity. All right. Page 14, Love Lifting Me.
not even going to try to take away or add to. Just continue uh, in our time of worship tonight. And I want you to know something. Uh, you know, the, the Lord always shows that. Amen. He's always present. Sometimes we don't realize it when He is. And, you know, when you look at today's situation, today's circumstances, and you heard what Brother Don testified a while ago, and uh, what, what we see going on in our world today, it, it's time that we make up our minds as Christian men and women that we're going to serve the Lord regardless of what anyone else around us does. Amen. Amen. That we're going we're gonna to be His kingdom children we're going to be his heirs. We're going to be his sons and his daughters, no matter what everything else happens around us, no matter what anyone else says, no matter what the government does, no matter any of those things, we can see coming a dark day for our nation. We can see coming a dark day for the church in this world. But let me tell you what. There is a light that cannot be extinguished. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a light they cannot put it out. Amen. And we have the scripture. I, I have been so blessed this week. I've been studying the book of Daniel. And this didn't nothing to do with what I had planned for tonight. But you know what? It's not about my plan. Amen. I just want to help you understand that sometimes... When the things around you are the dimmest, when they're the darkest, when you can't understand why if things are happening the way they are, it's when God is getting ready to show you something, to show you himself. And there's no better place to find this and see this than the book of Daniel. I have been inspired by the book of Daniel this week, I tell you. It's just like I've never read it or read or never studied it before. Because in our society today is a very similarity to the society of the time of Daniel. He lived in a pagan nation. He lived in a place where he wasn't supposed to be. Hey, let me tell you, this world ain't my home. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. We're a captive in it right now, just like Daniel was a captive there. He had three other cohorts with him. They were named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Y'all know the story, a great story of the fire furnace. Mm -hmm. But do you, do, do you really understand the story of the fire furnace? Do you really understand the darkness that they were in? Their religion or their faith in Jehovah God their, their desire to please him, their desire to live according to the commandments that he had set forth, and their desire not to do the things that he had asked them not to do. It started early with them in their captivity. It started when the king ordered them to be fed off of his table, that he, they were to eat the meat, and they were to eat everything that was put on his table. They were going to be fed the best, because he was going to train them for three years to be educators and to be people who would teach the language of the Chaldeans to the Hebrew children and all the other captives. They were the brightest of the bright. They were the smartest of the smart. But the reason that they were this to him was because of who they were in God. It was because God had given them favor. Because God had decided he wanted to use them. They didn't know how just yet. But he was getting ready to use them in a mighty way. So Daniel had asked. The, the, he gave them favor. You, you don't think favor is not important? Uh -huh. In the kingdom work of God? Amen, it is. God gave them favor with the people who were entrusted with taking care of them. To make sure they got fed, to make sure they get educated, to make sure they understood the ways of the child is, to make sure they understood the language, to make sure they understood the customs, because after three years, they were going to be presented to Nebuchadnezzar, the king. And they better be ready. And Daniel 
convince this man we don't want to eat that food. It's against our religion. It's against who we are. So he convinced him to let him for just a period of time, a trial period, to just eat soup with vegetables in it and nuts. No meat. Because they were eating pork. They were eating things that was not supposed to be eaten by the Jewish children. The Bible didn't say that all of them did that, but for, for, for Daniel, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this is what they had. Well, let, guess what? After 10 days or however many days it was, they looked at them and they appeared more healthier than those that had been eating everything they wanted from that king's table. And so God gave them favor and this man let them continue to do that so they wouldn't violate God. Amen. 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 You know, we, it, 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 there's nothing this government can do to make you stop serving God. Amen. 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 There's nothing this government can do to keep you from worshiping God. There's nothing this government can do to stop you from calling on the name of Jesus. There's nothing this government can do to take away your salvation in Him. Amen. They don't have that power. Right. Neither does any other human being or deity that's been created, including the devil. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. If the devil could take away your salvation, right. you would only go to heaven because he let you go. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. Amen. He don't have that power or that authority because you're going to go to heaven for one reason and one reason only. It ain't got nothing to do with him. It's got something to do with right. Jesus Christ. Right. And nothing Jesus. can take that away from you. Nothing. Nothing on this planet or ever created can take that away from you. It's a given if you belong to Christ. Amen? Amen. So these three Hebrew children, Daniel had done got promoted up because he showed excellence in visions and dreams. He had been appointed to a very high command. He was in the gate of the king's uh, palace. He had interpreted a dream for Nebuchadnezzar that no one else could do. and He had fame and glory because God gave him that. And yet we find the three Hebrew children because of, uh, of uh, Daniel's status, he elevated them with him. <clears throat> Amen? And he made them, uh, gave them some authority in the kingdom too. Well, this designation, this, this vision that Nebuchadnezzar had was of a statue, and the head of the statue was made of gold. And Daniel told him, he said, that is you. King Nebuchadnezzar, this is your part. This is who you are. And all these nations, all these, these people are going to come after you and they're going to be powerful, powerful, but you're the head, you're gold. Well, I don't know what had anything to do with Nebuchadnezzar's next move or not. But the next thing you know, he has constructed a statue. This statue is 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and it's gold. And he had given instruction. He had all these governors and all these princes and all of these legislators and all that. Now Daniel wasn't there because Daniel's in the king's gate doing judicial stuff. And these three Hebrew children are there in this great big gigantic crowd. And the Bible says, the king said, whenever you hear this music, I want you to bow down to this image. Amen? Amen. That's what they said. Why? That's what they said. Mm -hmm. And when the music played, everybody just did according to plan, and they bowed. Mm -hmm. Except those three young men. They didn't bow. King didn't even know this right up front, so a bunch of people said, Ha! They didn't buy them, we did. Let's go get them in trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So they went to that king and they told him, there's three of them Hebrew children. Now remember, he knew who these guys were. He knew who Daniel was. They were special. 
He had, had, he had, had an audience with these guys. He knew who they were. He knew they were the cream of the crop. He knew that they were wonderful people. They were the best of the best of the young men, even in his nation, because God had made them that way. And he gave them another chance. He got there and them in front of him, and he made it. He was going to make an example out of these three boys. Y'all, let me tell you. I'm going to interject this. In New York City and in California, they have tried to make an example of the church. They have been trying to tell them, we'll tell you when you can worship. We'll tell you when you can bow down. We can tell you when you can pray. We'll tell you how many people are going to show up. And, and if you don't mind us, in Los Angeles, they went and arrested that poor old pastor. They threw him in a slammer. They sent policemen in the church house to get him out, carry him to jail, and find him, and continue to find him. Well, thank God our Supreme Court this week said that was unconstitutional and those governors broke the law. Amen. Praise God. It ain't just all bad, but it's getting there. And it reminds me of this time yep. where this man, this man and his audacity and the, back, and the power that he had and the dominance of his government and his society and his great army says, you will bow when I tell you to bow. Mm -hmm. Well, we're seeing that play out in front of us today. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what. When everything around you looks bad and horrible, don't give up. Because God's still on his throne. That's right. Amen. Whenever they ask you to violate his law, no, don't do it. Stand strong. You know, these guys didn't even know what Peter and John were going to encounter when they said, they said, don't worship this Jesus anymore. Don't be preaching in his name no more. And you remember what Peter said? What are we supposed to do? Obey God or obey men? And they began to continue to preach in the name of Jesus. Because they knew God's law superseded man's law. It still does. Amen. Remember that. Amen. It still does. And the only way they're going to take away your rights and freedoms of a religion is when you yield and bow to them. When you quit coming to church. When you quit serving God. When you quit praying, when you quit witnessing, when you quit studying the Word of God and sharing it with others, when you stop worshiping God, then you've done something really wrong. These guys said, uh oh, we ain't doing that. And he said, I'm going to give you one more chance. We're fixing to play the music. And I want you to bow. He was really nice to them about it. And I love what they said. And I want to read this to you. This is in chapter uh, 3, uh, verse, 15. verse six, 17. So the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this is 16, answered and said to the king, he told him what he wanted to do. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Just, just know this. There ain't no, this ain't open for debate with you or anybody else. Now listen to what they said. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Do you hear that? <laughs> He's going to. Ain't no baby in there. One way or another. He's got and look at what they said. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods. We won't bow down to you. We're not going to bow down to your gods. We're not going to do it. <laughs> so whether he rescues us or kills us, we ain't done. You know, one of these days, we're going to have that same choice. Yep. It may not be in my generation. That little boy sitting on the front of the pew hollering amen tonight may have that make that decision. Yep. 
We want to keep him sitting here saying amen. That's right. There's been already been people had to make a decision like that. But it's going to be on a grander scale. And this king was all nice and bubbly trying to get them to do this and now his whole demeanor changes. Right now, our government had just been real nice about it. Using the law to their advantage. Sort of. But at some point, they're going to lose it. And it's going to be fury. And he's, and look at what it says, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake, and he commanded that they should Heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. I want you to get it higher than you've ever had it before. You get ready to blow this thing up. I want some fire and I want these guys chunked in it. I want my captains, I want the best of my military to get these men so everybody will know how serious I am about this stuff. And I want you to bind them and I want you to throw them in this furnace and burn them alive and let everybody see what happens when they don't. Obey me. Looking bad for these guys, isn't it? Amen. You, they didn't know what God was fixing to do. But they knew they weren't going to bow down because they knew what he would do if they did. Amen. Amen. Y'all, when we yield to Satan, what do you think God feels about that? He gets angry. <laughs> he gets furious. Never committed ain't got no fury like that. God's going to have over that kind of stuff. So they did what he said. And they heated the fire furnace up just like they said. And these men bound them up. And they the men that threw them into the furnace were burned alive as they threw them in there. Amen. Now they had them up over this thing and they threw them in this pit. And when they threw them in, it burnt, it killed these men that threw them in. That's how hot this fire was. Amen. <laughs> and then something happened. Somebody said at night, God showed up and showed out. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Right. They didn't know what was fixing to happen, but they knew they were not going to yield to the devil or to a government. They were going to yield only to God, and they were going to stand for Him. <coughs> and if it killed them, fine. They knew what Paul knew. Mm -hmm. Amen. If they kill me, I'm just going to wind up in a much better place than this right here. Amen. It'll be over with soon. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so they threw them in there. And it says that then those men that were bound on the coast, their hoses and their, their hats and, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace, therefore became the king's commandment, was urgent. And they did these things. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then, Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. Don't you think it's time we astonish some people? Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> that we don't yield like they want us to? I'm not advocating violence or, or anything. Nope. I'm advocating standing on the principles of our Lord and Savior and on His Word. Amen. Amen. That we be the church. That we be strong in the faith. And that we don't let anyone dictate to us except God what we're supposed to do. And he was astonished. And he rose up in haste and he spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into this lake, of, into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. And he looked at them and he said, Lo, I see four men in there. <laughs> Amen. 
You don't bring Christ in the New Old Testament? Yeah. Here he is. There he is. He done showed up. <laughs> and he's showing up. And look where he showed up. In the fire. In the, fire. In the midst of the fire. You're right in the midst of the fire that they were thrown in because of him and their faith in him. It didn't stop them from getting thrown in, but he was with them right there in that fire. He doesn't stop the bad things from coming. But he Don't you ever think for one minute, just because you know Christ, that, the, that persecution's not going to come, that torment's not going to come, that problems aren't going to come, right. that people are not going to turn on you. <clears throat> Don't ever believe that. But realize this. He promised I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be a friend. Stick close to him, brother. I will be with you. And he keeps that promise. Amen. And right there in the midst of that fire, there was. And guess what? That king recognized him for who he was. Amen. When you show people Christ, they see him. When you show people the light, they see the light. And they know who it is. And they know why you did it. And this king, he said, they answered him and said, I see four men here, loose, walking in the midst of fire. They have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like uh -huh. the son of God now how did this man know there was going to be a son of God Damn. God showed him amen and this is the, he looks like the son of God then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the, to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and he spake and he said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. Now notice this. When they came out, the Son of God didn't come out. Amen. He sent them out. And look how he sent them out. I you notice this. And the princes and the governors and the captains and the high counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, mm. nor was a hair on their head singed. Woo. Listen to me. Neither were their coats charred, <coughs> changed, nor the smell of fire on them. They not only came out of the fire, but because he was in there with them, the fire had no effect on them. Amen. Y'all, you know what they knew? They knew that even if the fire had consumed them, when they woke up like that little baby did, mm -hmm. they knew where they were going to be. When they woke up, from that burning. <clears throat> and it wasn't going to hurt long to kill the men threw them in there. <laughs> they knew they would be whole because of who they knew. Amen. But God showed up, showed out, and delivered these young men from that fiery furnace. And the, the, the king made he, he said I want everybody to know this God is a God this is the God of gods and he made a proclamation did y'all know that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is never mentioned in the scripture again after this day yep. did you the last mention of their names at all that was their Babylonian name, as a matter of fact. That was their Babylonian names. They changed their names from Hebrew, which all of their names meant something about God, and they changed their names to mean something about false gods. And yet, they remained faithful 
to their holy God. Y'all, we have got to remain faithful. Yes. No matter who's president or vice president, no matter what the government does, no matter what they say, no matter what rules they change, what laws they change, we must stay faithful because God is faithful. Yes. We must stay true because God is true. <coughs> we must stay the course. Follow Jesus and stand up and stand on the principles and the foundations and commandments of God. There is no other foundation that we can build on other than Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. That's it. There ain't another foundation and we're already standing on it. Don't let them move your building. Keep it right there. And how do you do that? By staying where you are. Amen. Amen. By standing where you are. By standing on the most holy faith. <clears throat> by staying grounded in the word. By knowing this word. By being filled with the spirit. By staying in prayer. By staying strong. Because our God is strong. And don't let them push you around. We war not against flesh and blood, the powers right. and principalities. Amen. In high places. Amen. When all else stands, when all else fails, stand. Stand. When all else stands, he said, when all else fails, he said, hold fast. Hold on. The battle is not yours. Right. It's God's. It's God's. So stand. Because the battle is belongs to the Lord. We got a song about that, that scriptural. The battle belongs to the Lord. And guess what? I looked back here the other day, way back here. He wins. <laughs> That's in Isaiah. The battle is not yours, it's yeah. God's. That's right. It's in Isaiah. But look at the back. Go, go all the way back to the very back, last two chapters of it. He wins. Yeah. We win. And, and just look where we're going to be. Because we stood. Because we stand. Because we hold fast. And we are not shaken by men who think they have more authority than God. We never need to let our values and our principles down. And y'all, they may destroy our Constitution before it's over. <coughs> Let me tell you what. I don't worship God because of the Constitution. I worship God because I've met His Son. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'll never forget that night. I met Him. And He's good. Amen. And He's got Amen. us. All the time. Amen. And he ain't going nowhere. That's right. Let's stand. Brother Gary. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was I was told uh, or I heard in my preacher that if you would take this, the Psalms of David, you know, his prayers and read them. And I have been reading those and I've just kind of been putting us in the place of Israel you know, at that time and because of the times such as we are in. And I was reading in uh, Psalms 109, and it starts, Thou hold not thy peace, O God, of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. And I'm thinking, you know, the United States. They have spoken against us with a lying tongue, they being the Democrats or the people who the far left, they compassed the United States about with words of hatred and they fought against them without a cause. It says, for my love, they are my adversaries. But, and here's what I say, I give myself unto prayer. And y'all, we, I still don't say that they have won yet. I still say it looks really bleak, but I still believe 
and that I, because I want to believe that God is going to show up and show out, as y'all have said tonight. And I just believe that if we as Christians continue to pray and pray and lift all of this up to the Lord, just like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, you know, they were toast. But God saw different. And we can be toast as the United States of America, but God can show up. Just remember this, though. God didn't change the government. That's right. He changed. He changed. He changed everybody around that government. He changed. He let that government see who he was, mm -hmm. and they're not big as he is. And they let him. And that's what we got to do. Yeah. He didn't change Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was his to begin with, and he was put there because he uh, God put him there. He was in the place of authority that he was in. He was a pagan. He he had a, other gods, and he was shown the glory of God countless times. And as far as I know, he died a pagan. We have to learn to stand as soldiers for Christ, not just Christians yeah. for Christ, but soldiers. We got to learn to stand on our on our faith in God and not our faith in the government, That's right. and try to make our government be godly people. When God may have a different plan for our government to change the course of the world. Mm -hmm. So our part, and I'm not telling you not, not to pray for your presidents and not to pray that uh, the people that come in charge. I'm just telling you. Uh, in, in this Old Testament that I've been reading, even in Daniel, he, he makes it plain that God takes them up and he takes them down. He raises up kingdoms, he takes down kingdoms. He puts good ones in, he puts bad ones in. All for his glory, all for his plan mm -hmm. for this work. Well, that's what I'm praying, that it will be for God's glory. Yes, ma'am. I want God to be the one to get the glory. I don't want Trump to get it. No. I don't want the Republicans to get it. But, but, but what I'm saying God is... To be the one. It may not be in God's plan for Trump to be your president. But it might be. It might and be. It but what we need to be praying for. I'm not for, giving up. What we need to be praying for is for God's will. Absolutely. God's because will be done. We were talking about this this morning in Sunday school. Is when we are filled with the Spirit, the Spirit is in constant contact with the Father. He knows the Father's will. He understands the Father's will. We're the ones who are fighting against it. But we need to be praying constantly. Father, what is your will? Show me your will. Help me to live <coughs> your will. The Help. key word there, though, is praying. It's we praying. need to be praying. And that's we what I'm trying praying. to put across. Yes. We need as Christians to stand up. We want God's will. I don't want Yeah, yeah I want God's will. But I'm not going to be defeated right now. I mean, I'm going to stand firm and stand The up. thing about it is, even if President Trump don't get elected, you're still not going to be defeated. No, That's what I'm right. trying to tell you. Yeah, I know that. No, our, our, our victory don't come through who's president. It comes through Jesus Christ. But and, I don't and these, want evil to come out. And these leave. men, as powerful as Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were with God, and as much, uh, as, much as they stood on the principles of God, they didn't fight the government. They didn't have to. They didn't. They didn't fight the government until the government ordered them to do something that was against the will of God. They yeah, stood they their stood. ground. That's when they stood their ground. And that's when God showed up and showed out. It's when they did that did that and stood on their principle against the government that didn't care about God. Mm -hmm. And we got to remember that. It, it's not about politics. It never has been and never will be. Well, I don't think it is either. It's all about Him and our service to Him and us doing our part and doing what we're supposed to do. Have, yeah, he tells us to pray for our president. If Joe Biden's your president, the Bible commands you to pray for him. It's going to be hard to do. It don't matter whether it's hard to do or not. That's what the Bible commands you to do. He also tells us to pray for our enemies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do not remind me, please. Yeah. Pray for yeah. our enemies. Yeah. Pray for those who Anyway, let's stand up. We can do this all night. Let's, let's stand up and, and uh, go to the Lord in prayer and you remember in that story, God took that king out of the wilderness and made him live seven days like an animal. Yeah, he, he wasn't through with that man yet, was he? He humbled him, so. Amen. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah, seven years he was out there, not seven days. Yeah. Amen. There's a lot to be studied there. We need to we need to keep on, but we don't, what I'm telling everybody is, and I've been saying this all the time, not something new to me, and I'm not saying it to be insulted. Politics is not going to save us. That's right. It's going to be done through God. It's going to be done through the Word of God. And we already know that this world ain't going to get no better. 
Here before politics. Amen. And he was here. Long he was here before government was That's ever right. here. That's right. Amen. That's right. And it's going to stay that way. Right. Amen. Brother Jeremiah, would you dismiss it, please? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and thanks for all the blessings we've seen today. I ask that uh, you keep us safe as we drive on this evening. Look over at all the people that were earlier mentioned this morning and uh, that needed help and prayers and sickness. In your name, amen. Amen. amen.